All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good to see a lot of interest, especially on the Oaken. Uh, we have been having a lot of discussions around Oaken since the morning. Uh, but this uh, discussion would primarily be about 20 minutes overview that um, in terms of explaining what Oaken is. And also, since we recently got onboarded on Oaken as a lender, so we'll share our experiences also with you during the journey. Uh, but a quick sense, I just wanted to check how many of uh, the audience come from a technology background, if you could raise your hands. <clears throat> okay, so pretty good mix, I think, uh, tech and non-tech. So uh, let's get started. Uh, I'm the Chief Product Officer at Credible, and I'll just take one minute in terms of describing what Credible is. So we are a five years old Series B funded working capital infrastructure company. We work with large enterprises, small businesses, and a number of lenders. And, and through our technology, we are trying to bridge the gap that exists today in the working capital finance space. So before we get started, I want to just set a context in terms of where we are in the overall lending ecosystem. Uh, since this is a, a conference specific to fintech, you may have heard a lot of discussions around there is a lot of gap when it comes to credit supply and credit demand. But just to put some numbers into perspective, some of the reports quote these numbers that there are close to about 300 million Indians who at some point in time may have experienced some kind of an interrupted flow of capital. And if you want to categorize this uh, audience, uh, the 300 million, they would have MSMEs, they would have gig economy workers, they would have, let's say, farmers, small business owners, and individuals. So it's a very wide spectrum that is currently, that might have faced some kind of a lack of uh, credit uh, in their lives. Um, but if you look at it from the lender's perspective, broadly you would hear that uh, there is a lot of uh, lack in terms of having structured information around a borrower when they wish to, let's say, underwrite credit for a particular borrower. That's the biggest reason that we see. And the second reason that we hear is the cost for processing a single application is very high. And hence, the lenders typically focus only on the, on the core uh, economy rather than going for the long tail. This is what we have been seeing in the past. But there is more to it we'll, we'll discover uh, during the journey. Uh, okay, so before I define what Oaken is, what the ecosystem is, this, these are the three key terms that you need to learn so that you can understand the PPT better. Uh, if you don't understand this, you won't be able to get, I think, what, what I would be discussing in the subsequent slides. These are the three, three key stakeholders on the Oaken ecosystem. The first one, of course, is the lenders. Any bank or NBFC would categorize under this segment, primarily the regulated entities. Second is the key term, which is a loan service provider or LSPs. Now, if you have recently read the RBI's digital lending guidelines, this is not that. That LSP and this LSP is slightly different. Oaken was founded back in 2020, and that time their definition of LSP was slightly different. Today, digital uh, lending guidelines define LSP in a different manner. But for the sake of this discussion, let's define LSP as per the Oaken's context. It could be any service provider or any marketplace that has, let's say, a large SME base or a customer base with them. LSP could be, let's say, any grocery app. It could be any e-commerce uh, platform. Or it could be, let's say, uh, the government's portal today that we have, which is used for procurement, the, the GEM portal. So anybody who is looking to, let's say, embed credit at the time of the trade uh, for their ecosystem partners is categorized as a LSP in the uh, Oaken ecosystem. And the third, the important factor, uh, the important participant are the account aggregators. They are responsible for providing banking and GST related information today. And in future, more and more information are expected that uh, these account aggregators would provide to the lenders so that they can underwrite the credit from a holistic perspective. So this is what you need to know in terms of terminologies to understand Oaken better now. Uh, again, coming back to what Oaken solves, uh, Let's take a pause and in terms of let's define what exactly are the problem statements that each of these stakeholders today face. So let's start with the lenders. So if you speak to lenders, we touched base on some of these that lenders would say that I don't know, I don't have uh, access to credit worthy borrowers. And the biggest reason is there is lack of reliable alternate data on the, on the particular borrower. So borrowers today may be giving, let's say, bank statements, their GST data, et cetera, but beyond that, Lenders typically are blind. They don't know who are the kind of borrow, who are the kind of buyers that a particular borrow, a borrower is dealing with, and who are the kind of supplier that a particular borrower is buying material from. So their overall trade 
visibility is very poor when it comes to underwriting credit for a particular borrower. If it comes to a loan service provider, each of the loan service provider, let's take again, again uh, an example of, uh, let's say, the grocery apps. They would typically want all the suppliers on the grocery app or all the customers on the grocery app should have as broad access as possible through number of lenders. So they would want that, let's say, 20 lenders should participate uh, on their marketplace. At the same time, they should they would typically want to have as broad financial products uh, support as possible. So they may want to, let's say, uh, provide them term loans, overdraft, sales invoice discounting, so and so for different kind of uh, products to their participants. But imagine a scenario where, let's say, uh, Big Basket is going into the market and they are integrating with each and every lenders. Typically, from our experience, if you want to integrate deeply into one lender, it would take you a couple of months at least. But if you, are, if you want to do that, let's say with 10 such lenders, it can easily take you a very long time. And imagine this happening across so many LSPs. So Swig is doing the same thing, Big Basket is doing the same thing, Flipkart, Amazon, all of that are getting into that. So that creates a lot of inefficiencies also into the system. Uh, so this is one of the pain points that today LSPs have that to connect to a lot of lenders, they'll have to do one by one integration with them. Second is, uh, even after, let's say, they have connected, today lenders have a very high turnaround time when it comes to, from application to disbursement, it would typically take days uh, so that they, uh, the disbursement can happen to the borrower. That's the second pain point that LSPs today would have. From the borrower's perspective, similar story. If I am a borrower, I want to get credit, and I want to maximize my chances of getting credit, I would go to, let's say, 10, 20 lenders, and I would start applying loans with all of them without having every, any awareness that whether I fit a particular criteria of this lender or this particular lender can provide the kind of financial product that I'm looking at. So there is huge awareness gap when it comes to from the borrower's perspective also. And a lot of times what happens is these lenders would then do a hard pull on these uh, borrowers as well, which would adversely impact the credit worthiness of these uh, borrowers and the borrowers are not even aware. So this is broadly the kind of challenges that we see in the ecosystem across the stakeholders which then leads to incorrect pricing of risk, low credit penetration, very high low minimum uh, loan ticket size and delays in disbursement. And to solve for this, of course, there are several companies, several fintechs who have been currently working on solving for this problem statement. But Oaken is one such government's initiative wherein they are trying to uh, bring the three ecosystems together, LSPs, lenders, account aggregators through a common rail to solve for this. A very broad definition which we need to understand today is Oaken, first of all, it's not an infrastructure. Uh, that's the biggest takeaway for you uh, would be from today's discussion because it's not an infrastructure. It's a framework or a guideline that the government has given that if you want to participate on Oaken and if you are a lender, these are the set of APIs you have to implement or these are the set of guidelines you have to adhere to. Similarly, if you are, let's say, a LSP, you want to participate on Oaken, these are the set of guidelines that you have to adhere to. There is no such thing as an infrastructure that Oaken is providing today. So that would be the biggest takeaway in terms of defining what exactly Oaken is. And their aim, of course, is how do they standardize journeys across the borrowers and across the lenders. So whatever problems we talked about, that multiple loan applications, so many integrations that LSPs have to do, all of that can be taken care of. This is the vision that Oaken has been working on. High level, this is what the architecture looks like. What, what I told you that in the middle, we have Oaken as a rail, not an infrastructure, just a specification. On one side, we have all the lenders. And on the other side, we have all the loan service providers. Today, there is only one loan service provider which is active on the Oaken network, which is Jamsahai. But more and more uh, LSPs, of course, would come forward. And there are several lenders who are already gone live uh, on the Oaken network now. This is a list of lenders who are now live onto the platform. Of course, Credible, are, we have a technology company and then we have a subsidiary which is NBFC. Uh, we are also live on Oaken as a, a lender. But apart from that, these are some of the prominent banks and NBFCs. Uh, I think as of yesterday, I had a discussion with the Oaken team. I think broadly eight or nine lenders today are live. Apart from that, then these are some of the account aggregators that are prominently working in the Oaken space. But there are several account aggregators that have been given licenses, so of course, I could not cover all of them here. From a loan uh, service provider perspective or loan solution provider perspective, like I said, Gem Sahai is the only one who is currently active. And then GST Sahai is the next one, which is coming very soon. So any lender who is active on 
Oaken can start consuming loan applications from GST Sahaya as well. <clears throat> so broadly, this is a very high view of that how a transition typically takes place on Oaken. We'll get into the detail, we'll take one such uh, example as well, but just to give a broad sense, typically it all starts with uh, the need for a loan. So a borrower typically wants a loan, uh, the need would identify on the LSP itself, let's say if they were trading or they were doing some kind of a transaction, they were in the need of credit, that's where it starts. And all the information from the LSP is then brought, if they show interest, if borrower wants credit against uh, a particular trade transaction, then all of that trade related data is shared with the lenders on the Oka network, which basically means all the information is broadcasted to all the lenders who are available on the network. Lenders would run their own BRE on their site. If they like to fund this particular buyer, if this fits into their credit policy, they would come back with an offer. All the offers get aggregated back at the LSP level are shown to the borrower. Borrower can then select which lender they want to go ahead with. If, if all goes well, then KYC is done and disbursement is done directly by the lender itself. We'll get to in this in more detail as well. So don't worry, I think if you have not covered this, uh, got, uh, gotten this completely. From a account aggregator perspective, uh, account aggregator's role here is without a borrower uploading bank statement or without giving a specific consent to access GST data, how can you facilitate all of this data to the lenders? So through one single consent, can we give the full GST returns data plus the last 365 days bank transactions to a lender for, for the lender to underwrite? So that's what uh, the role is being played by the account aggregators on the Oka network. <clears throat> All right, so let's take an example of one transaction flow. We'll go through the, the only LSP, of course, which is live right now on Oaken. We'll see what is what does a borrower journey look like on the GEM portal today. We'll go through step by step and um, that hopefully will give you more clarity on the network. But before that, for the audience may, who may not be aware what GEM or GEM Sahai is, so GEM is a government's e-marketplace. So any government entity, if they want to do any kind of procurement, they would post all of their tenders on the GEM marketplace and any MSME or any supplier can then bid for those tenders. If they win that tender, they get the purchase order from the government entity. So this is GEM on GEM Sahai. GEM Sahai is an app which is specifically created by government to facilitate financing to people who are trading on the GEM portal. So anybody who has got, let's say, a purchase order from, uh, from any government entity, they can get financing against that on the GEM Sahai app. So this is how the journey looks like. Uh, any borrower, if they want to transact with uh, Oaken, nothing changes for them. They are in their usual manner, they are operating or they are uh, dealing with their GEM Sahai app. They will log in into the GEM Sahai app. The next step is, I'm not sure if you can see the screenshots, but uh, the leftmost screenshot basically shows a list of all the purchase orders that a borrower or the supplier on the GEM would have received, let's say from a government entity. They can select or they can share all these purchase orders with the lenders on the Oaken network um, in the hope that of, of course they can get financing against these purchase orders. And technically if you see from the lender's perspective, this is nothing but a uh, supply chain financing is what we are doing, where we are doing a purchase order financing on GEM. Now uh, the third screen is where you see the details have been shared with the lenders and I'll come to what all data typically lenders get on their side. Uh, just park that question, park that thing for now, but uh, lenders would typically run BRE on their side and they would send back uh, the loan sanction amount. So for example, let's say the purchase order was for rupees 50,000 rupees. A lender might say that I can only fund, let's say 30,000 rupees against this purchase order at a rate of let's say 12% plus 1% processing fee. Whatever is it, all the loan off offers are aggregated at the third screen are shown to the borrower and they can select one of that particular offer. When the offer is selected, the, the lender whose offer got selected, uh, they get an intimation that your offer has now been selected. We have to initiate the KYC journey. There are two options to do KYC journey. You can complete the KYC journey on the LSP app directly or the lender's KYC can also be opened in the LSP itself. Here the example that we have taken is the LSP itself is doing, is facilitating the OKYC. If you, if all of you are aware on, let's say, uh, the Aadhaar XML that is shared with the lenders, that is the kind of support that is available on Oaken today. 
post that account numbers, account details are shared to which the money has to be given. Um, and lastly, the loan agreement signing also happens on the LSP itself. The second screenshot shows, I think, how the loan agreement would look like. And each lender would provide their own text that how the loan agreement should look like. And this shows up on the LSP. Finally, this completes the flow. And then once the flow is completed, the disbursement happens directly by the lender to the uh, end borrower's account. From a lender's perspective, this is all the data which is available for underwriting. Um, the bureau data is something which the lender has a responsibility to pull themselves. So any LSP cannot share bureau data with the lenders. So uh, lender would fetch the bureau data themselves, which would include things like civil score, any DPDs, et cetera, past loans, et cetera, and accordingly they can take a call on that. Apart from that, each LSP is responsible for sharing transactional data uh, with the lenders. In this particular case, GEM would share a lot of details. For example, they would share their overall seller rating, uh, other things like how long the seller has been working on the GEM portal, so overall vintage that the seller has on GEM. Uh, other things like what is the overall fulfillment history that a particular seller has uh, onto the GEM portal, how many orders were given to him, him or her, and then how many orders were actually fulfilled completely. So all of this uh, performance-related data is something which is also shared with the lenders. Now, collectively, it is a responsibility of the lender itself to underwrite this credit. Underwriting is completely a responsibility of the lender. So tomorrow, if NPA happens, you cannot claim any responsibility with Oaken. Oaken is just a provider of information. Credit model still stays uh, with the lender itself. So won't get too much into the technicals here, but if you are a lender, these are the four set of APIs you are responsible to implement which broadly uh, is around loan application APIs, offer APIs, KYC APIs, and disbursement APIs. Uh, for people who come from technology background, all of these APIs are asynchronous in nature. Having said that, each lender has to give a response back on all, on all the requests within 90 seconds. So that basically means within 90 seconds, you have to give your offer back to the Oaken network. Within 90 seconds, you are also responsible to make a disbursement, but that's where I think there is some discussion you, of course, you can have with the Oaken team. But it's as real time as an overall ambition that the Oaken team is currently following. <clears throat> All right, so quick recap, uh, whatever we have discussed so far. We started with what are the credit prep problems faced by the ecosystem today. I think all of us appreciate that. That's the reason we are here today. Uh, second, who are the key participants on the Oaken network? Third, Again, repeating this, Oaken is a protocol and an API. It's not an infrastructure. This is what you should always remember. Uh, fourth is, we've gone through one transaction journey on the Gems High LSP app. And we also have gone through, we have seen at a very broad level what does the API implementation for lenders look like. And finally, uh, what all data might be available for you if you are a lender for underwriting credit on the Oaken network. While but it might seem a lot, right? So if you, for example, as a lender, if you want to get onboarded onto it, or as an LSP, if you want to get onboarded onto it, it may seem a lot, especially the last two points. Because when it comes to lenders, you may not be ready uh, with the infrastructure to implement all these APIs to get onboarded on Oaken. Similarly, you may not have um, the full underwriting capability, especially on the Oaken side, that how can you underwrite this particular credit. But there are now a lot of companies who are working, especially on this part, that how can we make it easier for the lenders to come on board uh, the Oaken network, whether you are a lender or whether you are an LSP. So on that credible also, so our company also has a proposition very specific to Oaken. So I'll start with Credible's Oaken connector. So this is a connector which is designed speci uh, uh, specially for the lenders. With this connector, any lender can get onboarded onto the Oaken network with, within just say, let's uh, next 10 days. So if it would take, let's say, two to three months for you to develop these APIs and host it on your side, but with this connector, you can get onboarded Oaken within 10 days. Similarly, on the second part, on the LSP side, uh, Credible also has a business growth app called as Upscale, uh, which is uh, primarily designed for the SMBs and has a full borrower journey. This, we are currently in discussion with Oaken to bring upscale as a LSP app onto the, on, onto the Oaken network so that um, any origination can happen directly through uh, the upscale app. But more importantly, the same 
upscale app can be embedded as an SDK in any LSP's existing app. So for example, same example, Big Basket can embed upscale app as an SDK to get on board uh, Oaken. Same way Swiggy can do the same thing. Finally, we also have a digital underwriting module. Whatever we have done on the Oaken side, all of that is available as a white labeled play. Uh, India's two of the top five banks are already using our digital underwriting module to uh, underwrite their SME credit. And this is also which we have available to speed up your journey on Oaken. I'll skip this uh, in terms of, I think a lot of this we have already discussed. That's it, I think in terms of what I want to discuss with all of you, uh, a quick brief on what Oaken is. Happy to answer if there are any questions. Yeah. Uh, does Oaken is also related to, except that's the protocol, does is also related to repayment APIs? It's there only till disbursement or repayment APIs also repayment they Repayment also is considered. Right now, LSP from LSP perspective, Gem would route uh, repayment to directly to the lender. Okay, cool. Uh, I have one more question. Like yeah. if I have to draw parallels from the lending industries to the mutual fund industry, so how the mutual fund industry has a BSC star MF or an MFU which connects all the AMCs. So Oaken is connecting all the lenders on the LSPs. Is it the right uh, parallel? I'm not the right person. I don't know, <laughs> know much about mutual fund okay. Cool. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Sorry, go. Yeah. Uh, so uh, while uh, explaining the journey, uh, at one particular point, uh, there was uh, some in information interchange uh, between, uh, say, I would like to believe that it is an account aggregator who would provide details uh, regarding the borrower. Not today. So today, account aggregators are not live on the Oaken network. Okay. So you get only gem-related data, which is LSP data, okay. and anything with respect to bureau is directly pulled by the lender. Also, uh, today if you want, you can actually get uh, data around bank statements or GST through account aggregator, but the problem is the LSP journey today on GEM does not support that. But Oaken team is working very aggressively on that. So I believe in the next two to three months, we should start seeing account aggregator data also on Oaken. Yeah, so the next question is that if you want to embed this journey onto, uh, say, ONDC, yeah. or uh, you want to embed this journey onto a, a seller's app, Correct. right? Uh, in that case, you would need that information. Uh, because uh, how would anybody discount those bills? As, as you said in case of GEM as well. Uh, so I am a supplier on GEM yeah. and I, am, I wish to discount the bills. But at the same time, uh, the correctness of the account is something is paramount. Correct. So how, how, do, how would that work in <coughs> case of GEM? So two parts to this. If currently, the reason uh, we don't have the bank statement data on Oaken is driving the fact that the overall ticket sizes on Oaken today is small. So you would have loans around 50,000, 60,000 rupees that is going on. But the moment you have bank related data, which most of the lenders are comfortable underwriting, this ticket size would definitely go up. On the second Correct. point on your ONDC, are you from ONDC? No. Okay. <laughs> so on Axis ONDC, Bank. anyway, even credible as a company, we are also working directly with uh, ONDC. We work closely with Oaken, with ONDC. And that's what currently ONDC team is also trying to figure out that how can they marry Oaken companies like Credible and bring in an end-to-end -end, uh, credit underwriting journey or let's say an embedded credit journey exactly. into the seller apps or the buyer apps. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, then you would have a greater degree of adoption plus the scalability would also be uh, much more. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. In fact, my question was very much on the same lines. Thanks to the lady in the room, she's asked a very uh, valid question. You're talking about account aggregator and many such frameworks, which involves a huge amount of customer consent. Yes. So you need an OTP from the customer yes. to which you don't have any, you can't govern the time in which the customer would put the OTP. Yeah. Uh, or for that matter, even a bureau or for the matter, any other pools that we do. Yeah. 90 seconds and customer consent, how do they go in the future? And we were mulling amongst our teams how to handle this. Because that gives you a huge amount of data over and above what that one PPT of underwriting gives you. Correct. If we want to sharpen our credit call, we need more than what Oaken as a framework offers. No, I, I agree with you, but I think currently they have kept it at 90 seconds. But once we get into bank related data, et cetera, they may have to increase uh, that limit also. But as of today, and that's the reason, I'm, because today we are not dealing with, so there is no customer interaction that is happening on the lender side today, right? Everything is happening on the LSP side, and which is a very controlled experiment that the Oaken team today is doing with, with LSP, uh, with Gem as LSP. Um, but this is, yeah, this is something which we will have to see, I think, how we would solve this problem. 
See, typically we have not seen, so we also have our own uh, marketplace platform wherein borrowers come and they register and all, which is more, which acts more like an aggregator. There, we have not seen problems around that people don't enter their OTP, et cetera, within 90 seconds. Typically, we have seen that happening. But can you be so rigid around that? So if you don't send a response back within 90 seconds, you're out of the transaction. That is something we will have to see, I think, as the ecosystem matures. A second related question, we found when we went through the gem site, not yeah. the gem Sahai, gem Sahai is yeah. in the making, a bulk of the purchasers were Indian Railways and other PSU organizations and certain government establishments. So how much of retail do you think will get into this? In fact, we found some tribal artwork and some pottery and all that, some woolen stuff and all. So right. I'm not able to uh, actually put my point on where would be the marketplace be? Because this seems to be largely government, done by government, sold by government, consumed by government. So what about the... As of today, the only LSP is GEM. That's the reason you see everything government. The moment you have, let's say, the next, like I mentioned, uh, if the next app is, let's say, Big Basket, then you'll see a lot of retail coming to it. But today, this is the first experiment that they are doing with the uh, GEM Sahai app. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, just one small question following up to the gentleman's question. Uh, to understand the chronology of uh, how the OTP thing happens followed by the offer or what's it like? I think you showed it on one of your slides, right? So the first, the person has to put the OTP. Yeah. And then the bank receives the data followed by the offer. So today, bank statement data is not shared. Right. Uh, with any of the lenders. That data is not there. It's mo mostly uh, validation on whether I'm accepting this particular offer through an OTP. That is primarily being driven there. And the previous consent? Which consent, sorry? The consent that you give for your uh, GEM data to go out. GEM data, that's part of the journey itself. So I think that's primarily what is being driven by the Oaken team on LSP side, right? So that's where lenders are not concerned. Typically, uh, on the lender side, if we are, and here most of the lenders are doing a soft pull on Sybil. That, for that, to do that, typically you need an OTP to do that. But for Oaken, there is a relaxation that without that uh, OTP consent, you can also pull a soft pull. So that's where we are doing some kind of a, a data pull, but rest, everything is happening on the LSP side, which is GEM. And, and all those consents are already taken as part of the journey or as part of the TNC. Once they begin their journey that I want to get my purchase orders financed. No, so, so where's the 90 second issue arising? Is just so 90 issue. seconds says, um, I've shown in trust that I want to get my purchase order funded. That gets broadcasted on the open network all the lenders have to come back whether they want to fund this person or no, within 90 seconds. Oh, okay. That's the first 90 second play. And then post that, today while we are not doing it, but they also want the same thing happen, same thing to happen for disbursements also. That within 90 seconds you do a disbursement, otherwise they'll allocate the offer to some other lender. Sorry, Thank one you, more follow-up question on that. Uh, yeah, uh, for the credit score, right, you said there is no OTP required. Like, who will be supporting this, either Experian, Equifax? Sibyl. Sibyl, Sibyl has a separate arrangement with Oaken. Okay. So if you get getting onboarded there, uh, they would give you a specific set of credentials, okay. which is only for Oaken. Sure, thanks. Sir, in the Last journey, question, please. <laughs> sir, in the journey you have shown, uh, here the government will eventually make the payment to the lender. Correct. Right. Now, in future, there might be the, the lender has to collect money from the customer who's taking the loan also. So, uh, in that scenario, like how will the repayments be taken? Will Nash also be integrated into Oaken journey and how will that part be sorted out? So today there is nothing like that, but yeah, in future it would be required if you go live with that. Okay, because that will also result into a lot of drop-offs, like. True. So. Okay, All everybody, right. we are running short of time. Thank so uh, if you have any more questions, you can ask Mr. Nitin in person. Well, everybody, round of applause for our speaker, Mr. Nitin.